Um, yeah, and the separation kernel that, that was, was uh, invented and defined by John Rushby uh, is such a reference monitor that allows the coexistence of, of trusted and untrusted components on the same, on the same system. Um, there are several commercial implementations of, of the separation kernel available currently, uh, one, one of which we are using for our workstation. So, how does such a mill system, such a system based on the separation kernel, uh, look like? Usually, the, the separation kernel, the commercial separation kernel, you can have allow the virtualization of, of, of legacy operating systems and such like. Uh, virtual machines that contain a complete Linux operating system, virtual machines that contain Windows. And then, uh, usually, uh, you're able to implement native lightweight applications that, that then can perform critical tasks. Um, one property of the separation kernel as a reference monitor is that you can define a security policy um, which can define communication channels between different applications on that system. So um, that you can, for example, uh, define a channel between Linux and some native application, which then, then does some security critical uh, operation, checking, encryption, whatever is necessary in the, in the architecture. Um, the other thing that is uh, a, a core property of the separation kernel is that also access um, to hardware is, uh, is defined in the security policy and is enforced by the separation kernel. So the question is, that kind of architecture with um, legacy operating systems uh, that run virtualized and native applications and a secure resource allocation, how can that, that enable us to build a cost-effective uh, um, and, and verifiable platform and especially a workstation? So, um, the key point to, to such kind of architecture is the, the trusted computing base uh, and co called the TCB and the minimization uh, of, of that. Um, the, the trusted computing base is, is the set of, of, of hardware, firmware, software that has to be trusted to fulfill or to enforce some security policy that you have defined for, uh, for your system. And that means that any part, uh, if, if any part of the TCB is compromised, then your, uh, the system cannot fulfill the security policy anymore and can't, and can't enforce the policy. Um, and that means each and every part in the TCB have to, has to be trusted. That means I have to trust every part of the TCB that it, that it fulfills its purpose in, in, a, in the correct way. Um, but the question that arises is whether uh, the trusted parts I have are also trustworthy, and that this is one key aspect in designing uh, a security system. And um, when, we, when we raise that question, I, I just see that we almost cannot see the green shade in, uh, at the beamer. That's unfortunate. But I will, I will explain what, what that gra graphics means. Um, when you have to trust in all parts of the TCB, then, it's, uh, then it, it seems natural to de decrease the size of the TCB and to, to create, create some evidence that, that components in the TCB really fulfill their, their purpose. So the question is, how can we reduce the, the TCB size and how can we create the, the trustworthy components? One example for, for, such a, for the TCB and what, what the TCB is, um, is a monolithic system, like in that graphics. There are parts which originally were, were green, which is this web server. The operating system, together with all services that run privileged, all file systems, drivers, and everything, that's, that's a privileged part of, of, of Windows, for example. I had Windows as an example, but it also uh, is true for Linux or, and any, any other monolithic system. Then we have some firmware and we have hardware. And all that, that parts are trusted. If you, if you see the, uh, if, if you um, have the web server and, uh, and, and want to make up the trusted computing base, that means what part of the system do I have to trust um, for, for the web server fulfilling its security policy? For example, 
not granting access to some specific file, then this, you have to trust all this. And these are many, many million lines of code that, that have to be trusted. Um, the two points I brought up was how to minimize the trusted computing base and how to make the components that then um, are trusted, how to make them trustworthy, actually. Um, minimizing the trusted computing base, and this is where we come back to the MILS architecture, um, can be done by having different components in the system using a MILS architecture. And for each functionality, uh, we have to analyze what the security critical part of, of, that, of that functionality is. And then there's one strict policy. If you want to implement uh, uh, some functionality, leave everything out that is not critical and, and only keep the essence of security critical functions and um, put the, the critical ones into one, one partition of a MILS mil system and put everything else into uncritical partitions of the, of the system in, into untrusted parts. Um, the critical functionality then usually is implemented as uh, native applications uh, on, on top of a separation kernel. Um, and the uncritical uh, functionality can be implemented in whatever you like as we don't have to trust it. And we usually uh, do this as, as large virtualized uh, virtual machines that, that run, for example, Linux. Um, by using the communication mechanisms and the, and the communication policy of the separation kernel, um, you can then connect the trusted and untrusted parts and so end up with a, with a functional, uh, functional system again that has the same functional properties as the, as the monolithic system I just presented. So this leaves the question how we can create trustworthy components. Um, when one thing that is important is to have some, some minimal runtime. Uh, in our project, we are using Ada course uh, CFP runtime. Um, and of course, you need some, some development methodology um, and that, that is trustworthy. And of course, we are using Spark to analyze the uh, the data flow of our critical components and approve the absence of runtime errors. Uh, furthermore, we, we are trying to, to model, formally model our components um, and to verify security properties uh, of, of the critical components. This is, this is work in progress um, uh, and we, uh, we're going further and, and pushing the limits uh, with, with uh, with every com component we are building and the, the more the, progress, uh, the project is progressing. And of course, if you have some, some, some model of your component and, and proven security properties, you want to show the correspondence between this model and, and your Spark implementation. Um, I will make up uh, two case studies uh, from our workstation. Um, it is way too, too complex to present all the security critical part of, of the workstation. So I picked two, one of which is the, the encryption part, those colored and black boxes are, uh, are shown in the, in the overview graphics. This is an implementation of the IPsec protocol. And the other part I will, uh, I will come to later is the secure graphics, the, the other key aspect in, in the workstation. Yeah, what is IPsec? Um, it is a protocol suit for securing inter the, the internet protocol, IP, by means of cryptography. And um, one part, ESP, this is what we implemented, uh, provides confidentiality, authentication, um, integrity, and, and anti-replay uh, measures. Um, but I want to get, do not want to go into too great detail. The details are in several RFCs. For example, uh, uh, 4301 and 4303. Uh, so uh, this can be looked up there. Um, this is an example how this is implemented in a monolithic system like, like Linux. So this is the, the operating system um, kernel, which again should be green. Green is the color that denotes trusted, uh, trusted components uh, in, in, in those slides. 
Um, you have the monolithic operating system like Linux, and there is an implementation of, for example, the network drivers you have, crypto algorithms, in the internet protocol itself, algorithms for routing, and, and the ESP uh, um, implementation itself. And then there is some application. Um, and if this application um, wants to transmit uh, sensitive information or classified information, it has to, to trust all of those components to do, to do the right thing to, to maintain uh, the security properties. Um, and what, what we counted, and this, was a, this is pretty conservative as we only took the, the operating system, and this even is a minimized version of Linux, which, which we are using for, for our monolithic products, uh, we have 70, uh, seven, seven, oh, 750,000 significant lines of code counted, and this is the number of, uh, of, of uh, lines of code that have to be trusted, and even worse, all parts of the Linux kernel, of course, are implemented in the C language, which, which doesn't make it more trustworthy. So if you take this, this architecture and this IPsec protocol, how can we transform this into a, uh, into a component-based MILS architecture that does the same but is much more secure than what we can expect from Windows or Linux or any monolithic system? Um, this is what we actually have done in, in our workstation. Um, we took a separation kernel and, and built a MILS system up on, on, up on, up on that kernel. Um, and we have t two instances of, of, of virtualized Linux. One is the, that network Linux, Linux, which should be great. Um, and the, another instance of Linux, which is the red Linux or, or any color, what, whatever information is handled by that Linux. And on top of that Linux, um, run some client application as in the picture shown before. So in principle, we have this, the, the same scenario as, as we just had. Um, those Linuxes, as the, the red as well as the gray, are completely untrusted. That means no matter what they do with the information, um, they uh, cannot circumvent the security policy. They cannot harm the integrity of the information. And then there are two components, the encryption component, ANC, and the decryption component, DAC, which both, both should be green. Um, and then through the communication um, policy of the, of the separation kernel, the red Linux can transfer information to the encryptor, which then does uh, the, the encryption and uh, transfers the information to the network Linux, which then does whatever is necessary to send the information out the network. And the same is true for the, for the other way. Encrypted information and pr protected information is sent to the decryptor. It does whatever is necessary, integrity check, decryption, and so on, um, and passes it back to the red Linux. And for the application, as this is a virtualized environment, this just looks like sending, uh, sending data over a network on, on Linux as usual. Um, one thing to note is probably that the separation kernel also should be green and, should, and is, of course, trusted as, as a component. Uh, so what, what are the parts of our trusted computing base in that example? It is all that, the separation kernel, the encryption device, uh, encryption application, and de the decryption application. Um, encryption and decryption, these are components that we have written ourselves, and they are implemented in Spark. Um, I will come up with figures about, about their size later. The separation kernel um, is, a, is a commercial product. 